Thank you all for coming, guys. Um, you know, when we hear the word dark flash, we just think of sometimes just a flash. You know, some people don't realize how dangerous, how deadly it can be, yeah, to life, yeah, the amount of money and property downturn. It's, it's a disastrous situation to occur, okay? Uh, so we're going to go through a little... Okay, so what is our flash? Well, it's a dangerous condition associated with the release of energy caused by an electric arc. Any ideas of where this might happen? Ready? Put your hand up. Yeah, it's okay. You want to know where it happens? Yeah, where could it happen? Probably in a breaker panel. It's a good place to start, a breaker panel, yeah? Bus bar systems, yeah? What about these huge gray boxes on the side of our buildings, yeah? These big interrupters, do you think that no, would I be? You can't get into them. Do you know, I want to share this, guys, because last week we run a safety a BBS card system, and one of our admin personnel, I was looking out the window and they seen this electrical contractor on the, bu at the building opposite working on this 400 amp switch. The lights are on on the building. He's got the panel open. This guy's got his sleeves rolled up. Yeah? He hasn't got a hard hat on. He hasn't got any glasses on. It's a little bit drizzly outside. <laughs> yeah? uh, and she wrote that. It was, she learned enough here to recognize that that was a danger. So some people don't see the same dangers as people do in the industry. Stu, I'm sure you, you could relate a couple of uh, stories yourself, okay? So very, very important that we are able to recognize that danger. Yes, sir. There is a defined difference between naivety and stupidity. So. Yes, and unfortunately, that line is crossed sometimes. I'm British, I know. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we, there is now the NFPA uh, 2018 that we can uh, follow and uh, gain information on arc flash, uh, the actual pre how to mitigate arc flash, the PPE, the boundaries. We can, we can really look in this document and follow it um, and understand how to be safe. So, when I say if we don't understand what an arc flash is, imagine we've got two hot lines, uh, two bus bars. Um, we get a fault between, or the, what we call the dielectric strength is, is brought down to a sufficient amount where it can no longer withhold the pressure of voltage. So pressure, like a hose pipe, yeah, filled with all that water pressure, but this is electrical, yeah? If you put a pin in it, what would happen to the hose pipe? It would, what would, it would leak water, it would spout out. And that's exactly what happens with voltage and pressure, okay? Um, we get a release of energy between, and that can be five times hotter than the surface of the sun. That's enough to vaporize metal plastics okay and uh, if you're in that vicinity i mean not only are you going to be exposed to the heat yeah you're also going to be exposed to all that toxic material in the air and basically what is our reaction to a shock i don't mean electric shock what do we do we 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 gasp it's primeval isn't it we we have to run away from that saber tooth lion <gasps> Yeah, gives us enough oxygen. Well, if that happens in front of you, you're gonna breathe that, all that toxic material in. Okay, so it's very, very dangerous. We have massive pressure waves, sound waves. Oh, these electricians like the guy that was on the panel over there, he didn't have any hearing protection on that we could see. Yeah, so that's another thing. Okay, uh, we may have shrapnel. Okay, in the form of the parts that are within the breaker panel or the bus system. 
and this can come out at a tremendous rate going straight through your body. Projectiles. Expanding, vaporized metal and air, air, invisible and invisible light. We must be making that up. What, what do we mean by that? Visible and invisible light. Any ideas? Some you can see and some you can't. We, some we can't. So ultraviolet, that's right. So if you're, you know, if you, if you have this really bright light coming towards you, no, it's okay, it's okay. A little bit of audience participation, okay? Um, so this bright light coming towards you, burning your eyes, yeah? A lot of arc, you know, these guys that are doing arc welding, they'll have a, a visor on, okay? And they'll be very, very dark glass. And that's to stop and reduce this UV levels to something that isn't going to uh, affect the eyes at all, okay? So if you don't have your glasses on, you're going to burn your eyes. They always forget to cover right in here, though, and get burned in the throat. And they get burnt in the throat, yeah, and that's right. So there's certain... Um, levels of PP that you will require for uh, the amount of energy that's going to be expelled during an arc flash. Therefore, it, you might not just need glasses, you might need a full mask plus a huge bib. Yeah? It's not to catch your food, guys. I know some of you guys have already missed that. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, what causes it? Carelessness. Warner broken conductor insulation, exposed live parts, loose wire connections, improperly maintained switches and circuit breakers, which, is, which we uh, me mentioned earlier on, okay? Uh, obstructed, disconnected, uh, disconnect panels, water, liquid, near electrical equipment, high voltage cables, static electricity, damaged tools and equipment. So there's a lot there that we could concentrate on. Um, out of all those, which one would be, you know, which one do you think is more likely? Thank you. Excellent, well done. You get a smiley face at the end of the class. Well done, awesome. Carelessness is the main cause. And when an arc flash happens, they will track back the paperwork. They'll track, what did he have on at the time? Was he able to do the job? Was he trained? Oh, that person trained, okay? Um, they'll want to know everything about it. Um, this is something that some people may have seen before, okay? Um, we're gonna try and go on the computer here and just, if you, yeah, just, Go on there and click that little button there, thank you. So the switch opens and the dielectric strength between the switch as it opens is not enough to stop that current flow. As the switch goes further apart, we might think, well, the dielectric strength between the resistance is enough. It isn't. All it does is ionizes the air and it grows and it creates its own path as it burns away all these particles yeah so if you're near that guys you well you might not have a very good day oh okay this is a popular one that's been out there uh, for those of you that haven't seen it it does show you the um the amount of energy in the form of an explosion. And it's always good to know there's, there's actually two parts to the explosion. So if you would uh, like to do this again. Now it's not the one in the middle, it'll be down the bottom. Thank you. So we've got two guys there uh, going to work on a breaker in Arizona. And they're racking in this breaker we call, we're putting this breaker back in service. And it was energized when you were bracking it in? Um, the, when I was at the NFPA conference in, uh, in, in Boston, 
they, I met with the guys that actually investigated this, and that's how I know it was in Arizona. And they, they said that it was in the, the closed position, the breaker. Interlocks can, can actually be overridden, okay? And if you, if you go and put a short between the load side, just like that switch opened under load, under load closing, we can still have an arc flash as soon as that dielectric strength is low enough or resistance, okay? Um, this, is a, this is another interesting one. Um, two guys working on an interrupter. If you would like to, again, go at the bottom there. Thank you. Isn't she doing a brilliant job? You get a pay rise at the end of this. So a massive arc flash there. This, this just shows you, I mean, I say I like this one. I don't like that anybody's injured but it does show you guys the importance of the correct PPE. He doesn't have the right PPE on. The, P the clothes that he has on have melted, you see? And what he doesn't understand is he's still on fire. And then when he realizes, because he's in shock, he, he manages to pull off the flaming clothes and uh, walk away and it's still burning on the floor there. Um, the one thing we don't want to wear in our everyday uh, tasks uh, dealing with uh, electricity is polyester clothing. <laughs> yeah. We have a temperature five times hotter than the surface of the sun coming towards us. What's going to happen to this? It's going to melt. It's going to melt into the skin. And you do not want to know the treatment that would ensue. Yeah, that's why you never have an electrician wearing polyester boxer shorts. Because the way they scrape that off the skin is absolute agony. As, um, as we found with this guy here. Uh, this guy, a uh, guy called Mike, uh, came to OCS around about three and a half years ago. It was actually when we had this wall here, we were actually uh, teaching. And he, when I was explaining the effects of arc flash and the treatment, he put his hand up and he said, we've been around all different arc flash courses. And he said, Paul, you're the only one that's ever explained this. Our OCS is the only people that have ever looked at this through different eyes and, and given a really good explanation. I was like, oh, thank you very much, but how did you know? And he said, well, I was involved in an arc flash uh, 15 years previous. I said, phew. Really? <laughs> I said, yeah. And that's when he gave me all the pictures in his account. Okay. He was working on a land asset. I'll leave it at that. I won't tell you the company. He, he went in to um, reinstall some 480 volt fuses. Yeah. Doesn't sound like a lot of voltage, 480 volts. It's definitely higher than what we have around our outlets here, isn't it? Yeah? Okay. So he went in and he had all his permetry, isolations were all completed. Yeah? He's okay. He had his glasses on, got his fuses, and he put his first fuse in. Well, he tried to put his first fuse in. Right? The, the motor, the system, Everything was, it was under load. It wasn't isolated. He had an immediate arc flash. Burnt him and his body. Again, clothes melted to his skin. He, he says he was a very thin guy. All right. Different to me because I'm, I'm quite like Arnold Schwarzenegger, I know. But no. So he was very, very thin. And his face swelled up with the amount of heat that was expelled. Okay. He breathed in all the toxic gases. Yeah. And he was writhing in agony on the floor. But he knew enough to tell the paramedics, don't put me out. Do not give me the drug that puts me out. And he was in so much pain, this guy. And the, Paramedics go, well, we have to put you out, you, you know, you're, you're going into shock. No, I want to speak to the doctor. And he 
he was still in pain all the way to the hospital. Yeah? Could hardly handle it. But he made sure he spoke to that doctor. I wonder why. Why did you think he wanted to speak to the doctor and not say, put me out, I can't handle the pain? Well, guys, I don't know if you know this, guys, but you've got 50-50 chance of death. Yeah? There's two drugs that they, they can give you. They can give you a drug that will promote the swelling to help save your features, your skin. Yeah? And they will give you a drug that will totally stop the swelling. That will leave you severely scarred. Yeah? The difference is the paramedic doesn't know. If he fell back and he, he was knocked out, he wouldn't be able to tell the paramedic, I haven't had an electric shock. If you hold on to um, a live conductor, the current goes where? Through your what? Through your body. And just like that arc flash coming towards you, it produces heat through your body. All your capillaries start to close up. They start to swell. Your, your veins, everything, your organs will start to shut down. So if an, a paramedic sees you like that, he will inject you with... Uh, the drug that should stop that happening okay try to save your organs and he gave me a full statement on this and it was something that i learned and i thought wow you know it was quite hard hitting and then as soon as he got there the doctor said <laughs> okay you've seen me i understand it was it was an arc flash we know what drugs to give you he said right doctor put me under and he was in hospital for six months guys six months yeah, and uh, one of the worst things uh, when they put him in a coma is to uh, look back and hear the stories of his family going in there and seeing him in this state with all the tubes and everything from, you know, from everything that happened. Now, he did state there, yeah, it was supposed to be isolated, but things are supposed to be isolated, aren't they? What should we do? Check it. Check it with a device approved, rated for the circuit. That's right. We've got to verify the absence of voltage. Yeah? Didn't happen on his, his part. Also, what didn't happen is that his employers didn't provide him with what? The correct PPE. Yeah? Employers must provide... Their staff and one of all hazards with the, the P, with what's in the area, give them the uh, the PPE as well. Okay. Um, so the story that and also he did he did mention when they do uh, this X-ray with his lungs, he, his lungs were pitted. He's, he's at high risk of lung cancer. Even you know he's anyway, it's quite sad. But he came and he's he now and I seen him and I said well. How old are you? And he said, well, I'm 50 odd years old. And I said, all right, you look well. <laughs> and he really did because he didn't have a wrinkle on his face. <laughs> Burnt all his wrinkles off. Don't go try to start an act flash, guys. Okay. Okay. Ah. Oh, where, where's that come from? Five to ten arc flash incidents occur in the U.S. alone. Okay. Uh, so we have to wear the correct PPE. Now, I've just shown you one set here. I don't know how far Troy's going to go into this. Um, but you can see that we already discussed that sometimes people are burnt around the throat area. And that's right, rightfully so because they don't have the requisite level of PPE. Um, judging on... Uh, whatever the arc flash analysis might be will tell us how far the distances that arc will be uh, expelled the energy okay it will provide us with our limited approach boundaries and our restricted yes sir at what level are you recording for this to us um well troy will uh, go through a little bit more this is just the the ppe uh, i mean and in short, if, if you've got a panel that states Category 4 PPE, yeah, then that's the, the type of uh, uh, PPE you'll have on. 
if you, if you talk to the NFPA, they say anything over category four, you shouldn't be using it. <laughs> if you have to put that PPE on, don't worry about the explosion. I mean, the explosion, think about everything else that comes with it. But you are in massive risk. And we've always got to remember as well, guys, just by wearing this PPE does not guarantee your safety. It will only provide 50% chance. Um, I won't go into totally all that, but because uh, I'm not doing the teaching, but it will provide you 50% chance of second degree burns. And um, the only reason we would wear this PPE is to limit or lower the amount of time we spend in hospital. Okay? That's it's how. Like a tent happening a day. How many, how many people are wearing that suit? Oh, yeah. How many? We don't know. An eye flash, an eye flash incident can, can happen, occur, and burn somebody's hand, or it could kill somebody. Yeah. Okay? Main thing is to wear the correct PPE. Also, look after your tools. You know, tools have got to be maintained. They've got to be clean. <laughs> they've, got, they've got to be in the right area. Now, if anybody's electrical looking at this, they'll be horrified, and they, rightly so. Yeah? Look at what they've done with the PPE. They've taken this uh, very large interrupter, possibly 11 kV interrupter, and they've bolted, using the original panel bolts, this whole um, panel... Uh, and, and, and taken all this PPE off the floor and stuck it to the side of a huge interrupter like this. I mean, this is, this is just very dangerous. Um, nothing's looked after. You can see the amount of dust on the gloves. Yeah? You see that? Okay. So if, if, a, if somebody came up here personnel and started to use this equipment and there was enough dust and dirt and debris on whatever device they were using... The pressure, if the unit was live, would track straight across whatever you were holding, whether it's insulated or not, and go straight to you as a body of water. Yeah? You're dead. All right? Or you're seriously injured. So we must look after our PPE. We must, we must um, place all our equipment um, and store it as per the manufacturer's information. So we got a few issues there that we spotted. Okay, guys, is that, is that it? Uh, make sure you isolate, lock out, and tag out. Very important, as we explained. Um, to ensure you know what PPE to wear, to operate any piece of equipment, it would be really handy if we all had these type of stickers on our isolators and our breakers because it tells us, doesn't it? It explains what flash PPE, what the boundaries are, what the incident energy is. We can relate everything over. So depend on the incident energy or the category, one or the other. Not everybody has them. Yeah? Not for offshore installations anyway. I would, I would hope that they follow it on land. Excellent, guys. Excellent. I think, I think we can have a look at this and uh, throw, throw out to you guys. What, what's wrong here? He's well protected. He's, uh, yeah, he seems it, doesn't he? Yeah, with his jeans on and without his hard hat. Yeah. And He's far enough. It's far enough away. Yeah. You pin on the mic, no gloves. Yeah. I mean, we all say, yeah, test for dead. <laughs> test for dead. Um, great, great idea to test for dead, obviously. Um, but if we're testing for dead, we've got to do things uh, safely. And to me, this isn't safe. Okay. Um, looking at something like this gets very very confusing we can go into electrical rooms high voltage rooms low voltage rooms we can be working on a panel then our friend comes and talks to us ah oh, did you watch the game last night oh yeah yeah i watched the astros beat every team in the world that's okay yeah well, astros one yeah uh okay and then 
puts his tools down, says, go for a break, comes back, and then he picks up his tools, and then he just turns round, yeah? He now opens a different panel. Is that panel the same panel as it was on? No, right? Opens that panel, massive arc flash when he takes the cover off because it's live. Human error, guys. There's a lot of arc flash incidents that will occur just because these guys are, are going into uh, cubicles uh, or opening transformers where they've just chose the wrong one. Okay? They just got a bit, you know, confused. They all look quite the same. Okay? So we've got to keep our areas clean. We've got to ensure that the labels are followed continuously. We follow our procedures. Our isolations are correct, permits, everything. Okay? Arc flash. Any questions? Okay. Don't go putting your fingers in any sockets. Okay? Yes, sir. Do you find on that panel it tells you what PPA means? Uh, that's what I'm saying. Not every, not every asset's going to follow the NFPA. And if they don't have it on the panel, how can the electrician know what PPE is correct? It's got to be in his procedures. He's got to have it in documentation somewhere else. The NFPA is, uh, well, it's, it's, it's becoming very important for offshore now. I know the likes of Hess and BP are taking that on. Okay? So I hope I'm not in job someplace else. You won't. Sorry. So I find oh, you may, yeah, yeah. Depends on if they're following the NFPA 70E or not. But if they don't follow that, what are they following? That's the question. So you have to do the arc flash analysis. Arc flash analysis has to be conducted, that's right. Yes. Major. Okay. All right, guys, right? Excellent. Well, I'm going to pass this over to Troy.